Hey guys, it's Rainhead back for another update video of The Bazaar. I'm uh, going to be actually talking about gameplay today and everything we've been thinking about to get to the point that we're at today and what our plans are moving forward. So, this is going to be a pretty long update. I want to make sure we talk about all the different versions of the game that we tried up until this point so that you guys have a good understanding of why it is that we want to go the direction that we want to go. So, back in 2017, uh, that's when I first started working on the game, decided to make one. And at the time, uh, Slay the Spire hadn't even come out. Deck builders were uh, just something that were popular in local gaming stores that sold board games, but they didn't have like mainstream digital adoption yet. So I thought this was a big hole in the market. I thought the biggest problems with Hearthstone was that uh, expansions just... <laughs> I thought the biggest problem with Hearthstone was net decking. Basically, I thought that... Uh, all of the skill that a player could demonstrate, all the unique strategies they could build with their collection of cards, uh, just kind of got invalidated by net decking websites uh, like TempoStorm.com. And it just kind of made the game boil down to the three decks that everybody's playing in any given meta. I thought this was very repetitive. And the natural solution was to make a game where you can't net deck. And deck builders already did this. Magic turned into Hearthstone when it made the digital leap. You could talk about MTGO, but Hearthstone was the first good digital version of Magic. And I, I thought that games like Dominion could make the same leap. That was basically the logic at the time. So I order some blank playing cards, and I start making these paper prototypes, and I make some game rules, and I start playing the game within a week of deciding to make one. And after a few months, I streamed some gameplay a few times uh, of this paper build, played with like Jeff and stuff, and Slay the Spire came out, and it blew up, because it's such an exceptionally well-made game. And it was a single player experience and it, you know, it wasn't like a multiplayer PvP game with a ladder like I craved uh, as a strategy game player. So it didn't quite scratch that itch that I wanted. Uh, but as we kept developing this game, this digital deck building idea, other titles kept releasing. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of where we were thinking in 2017. Uh, this is one of the first early renders of what we thought the game board might look like. And the basic idea here is you have your discard pile, you have your deck here, and you have your hand of cards. And just like most deck builders, you draw five cards, discard them at end of turn, every card does stuff. And, you know, basically what we did is separate the card pools. So instead of having both players draft from the same stuff, I wanted a class-based game. This class gets these cards, this class gets these cards. And this was really a pretty straightforward deck building game. I thought most of the innovation we would do is in the execution, the digital presentation, visual effects, making it better for streaming, that kind of stuff. Um, but the core was just a traditional deck building game. And we kept iterating on this idea. We polished it up a bit, came to a concept kind of like this. Uh, you know, some parts of it got simplified, less options on screen at any given time. And this is really the build we spent a ton of time playing with uh, before the game was like fully funded. And this style of game, just taking a deck builder and moving it to digital, it turned out to not be that good of a video game. Uh, it had a ton of issues. Uh, it's super input heavy. You have to manually play five things a turn. There's too much information on screen all at once, so players get choice paralysis. This was like eight piles on the screen that I have to pay attention to, plus five cards. It's a lot. Uh, just in general, the deck and the discard pile, it made sense in paper when you're playing a board game and you're drafting things and you want to give randomness to the gameplay and random draws. But when you have a digital game, decks and discard piles are just a really inefficient randomization tool. Uh, compared to just like a random number generator. And you can basically create that variance that you want in your game in a more efficient way than this clunky deck discard pile thing. If you guys want to look into more reasons why the deck and the discard pile were not a good fit, we actually made a, a video dedicated to that uh, on this channel. You can go back and check that out. But yeah, yeah, the, the general premise is like when you have a deck and a discard pile, there's all these awkward situations and it just feels clunky for a video game. So basically just taking a deck builder and putting it on a computer was not good enough. <laughs> we quickly found out. Uh, so we thought, okay, well, what are the problems? How can we improve this? Uh, as we saw in some of the older update videos, uh, like the design space one, there are a couple main issues with this. Number one, design space on cards. Like basically all of these cards just had one timing that they could be played at. It's just when you play the card, that's when it does its effect. Compare this to like a game like Magic where you have a bunch of different timings. Sorcery, instant, comes into play when this dies, 
when this triggers, when this attacks, when this blocks, you know, it's like you can have a bunch of different timings. So this version of the game had a ton of issues. The game was way too input heavy and there wasn't enough design space to make enough unique cards. So we wanted to fix those problems and we did it pretty aggressively. There were some other issues that we didn't like about it. For example, presenting the player with too much information on the board starting on turn one. We wanted the game to have escalating complexity so the board started kind of empty and would build up from the beginning, one thing at a time getting added. Kind of like games, you know, like traditional uh, card games use really well, like Magic. Turn one, I, board's empty, I play one thing, I pass the turn. Hearthstone, same deal, right? I play one thing or I just pass the turn on turn one. Turn two, I play a two drop. The board never starts complicated, it builds up over time. So basically these are like the three things we wanted to fix. Design space, too many inputs, and escalating complexity. So after making a lot of aggressive changes, we ended up with a board that kind of looked like this. And it just had one row for each player and some cards in the middle that would show up. And you would only see one player's stores at a time. This is one of the things we did to try to hide some of the piles. So if it's this guy's turn, the cards that are shown in the middle are his cards. He's the one choosing to buy. If it's Vanessa's turn, then she's the one buying. So there's never really like two rows of stores present at all times. Uh, this made the game simpler and it gave it escalating complexity because the board would start empty. And as the player would buy stuff, you know, it's no longer going to this abstract deck discard pile zone that shuffles at random times. Instead, when I buy something, it just went straight into play. And then it just did stuff right away. We liked that. We thought it was elegant, the rules were simple, and we really felt like the last version was so complicated, especially for new players, that we really wanted to simplify it a lot. Um, so we even removed money from the game. We realized that when all the cards cost the same amount of money to buy, players focused on the effect of the card more than the output to cost ratio, which was less fun to focus on. Basically, it simplified the game a lot. Uh, after working on it a bit more, we added a second row, uh, for some defensive mechanics. You would buy stuff, it would go to your one of your two rows, and you would just activate it to use it all the time. And this essentially turned all the cards from like a card that goes to a deck and then gets drawn and then plays an effect. Instead, now the game was permanence. Uh, <laughs> our, our cards all used to behave like spells, and now they all behaved like creatures. And this actually addressed a lot of the problems we were aiming to address. You know, suddenly when I draw five cards, I don't have to play all five of them, I just have to buy one a turn. As soon as these cards were permanents, it opened the door for a million different timings and positioning mechanics. You know, this turtle could buff adjacent cards now that's not a targeting parameter that we had before, when cards just fly out of your deck to your discard pile. They're not next to anything. Uh, we could do on death, we could do when this comes into play, all the traditional things that like creature cards can do in card games. It was great for design space, but this game had its own set of issues, uh, which we're going to get into in a bit. But yeah, this is mostly the idea, um, I think this is more recent art. This is kind of where we roughly ended up with uh, our digital prototype. It, our digital prototype was not this polished, it did not look as good as this concept art, because uh, we hadn't added all the assets, we hadn't 3D rendered everything yet. But what we had are beautiful gray rectangles with words on them, and the game functioned as it should. So this game actually had a lot of strengths on paper, and there's a lot to like about it, uh, but a lot to dislike too at the same time. And this is kind of the build that we're going to be playing for you today. So what you guys are looking at is an old developer build of the game. We would use this to just test different mechanics. Uh, first, you would just log in, jump into a game by challenging somebody and picking a class. So I'm sorry this is going to be a little bit hard to follow. Uh, this is just an internal developer build that Ben and I would play mostly, and uh, we knew what all the cards did, uh, so we didn't really need like pictures or text visible on screen at all times in order to kind of follow what's happening. But for you guys, I definitely see how this just looks like a lot of gray boxes uh, moving around. Here I have a game board from our development build, and I'll walk you through the different parts of it. We have uh, two rows for each player. This is the two rows for player two, and these are the two rows for player one, my perspective. And in the center, we have the store row. Now, items appear in the store row, and the players can buy those items. Once the game starts, uh, we'd start first off with a buy phase. And the way that this worked is, players would take turns buying one item at a time until both players had three. 
So here, Ben starts by buying Void Staff. I lost the coin flip as usual, uh, and I'm just gonna buy a few items. And you can see here, there's no like money costs. Uh, all the items are just um, equal price. Like you buy one per turn, there's no different costs on them or anything like that. And you decide where to position them, the left or the right of different items or front row, back row. Uh, and pretty much this is how every game would start. Uh, well, we called this the buy phase and it was pretty straightforward. So the items have different stats. This blue one is the durability, and it's basically how much health the items have. The orange one represents if it's been used this turn or not, and for weapons, the red one is how much damage they deal. When a player uses a weapon to attack an opponent's item, the durability number will go down based on how much damage the weapon does. This is what it looks like when a player uses two weapons to attack an opponent's item. Now here's a couple turns of gameplay after the board is full. We'll start with Reynad's turn. First he's going to press buy and get to buy one of three items. And now he has to use each of his items that he has. His bandages buffs one of his items, this battering ram, all these three are all weapons so he'll be hitting my items. So now it's my turn. First I'm going to look at my items I can buy. I only have room in my front row, so I'll put something in the front row. And then I'm going to use each of my items that I can, which is only these uh, Void Staff and Volatile Staffs. They only do one damage, so I'll ping his bandages and kill it. In order to win the game, you have to break all of your opponent's items. It looks like this. The players used to have a health bar and you just had to kill them in order to win the game. But we realized that breaking the opponent's items has always been the unofficial win condition because after someone does that, they always win the game. So we just changed the win condition to be breaking all their items, but we're not really settled on that as the win condition of the game. Those are the basic rules of how to play the game. It's, it's very simple, you just buy one item each turn and then use your items. And that's one of the big strengths of this build. There's a lot of things we don't like about it, but it definitely is simple. It's easy to play, it's very intuitive to position your items, and we want to keep those traits going forward. But honestly, we, we know that we're missing that dream of walking through an intergalactic marketplace. This game just doesn't fulfill that right now. So that's what we want to work on going forward. What we have now is just a skeleton with some fundamentals, and it's not close to a finished game. But we think that has a lot of potential. One of the main things we feel like we're missing is something that you the fans have mentioned a lot. We don't have money in this game. All the items just have a uniform cost, you just get one for free each turn. And we like that because it lets the players focus on the effects of the items. They don't have to worry about how much it costs compared to other items, they just worry about what it does. But honestly, the more we think about it, we realize that money is a huge part of that intergalactic marketplace dream. Like, you're in a bazaar, you should have money. You should be buying, selling, trading. That's what the game should be about. Right now we don't even have selling, we just have a board overflow system where you get rid of an item after you have too many in one of your rows. One of the things that kind of sucked about this build is the overflow system. Once your board filled up and you wanted to buy more stuff, you had to break your other existing items just to make room for the new thing. And this felt kind of disappointing, it was kind of bittersweet to buy an item when I had to break the other ones I bought just to make room for it. This is something that we want to visit in the later iterations of the game. Selling just makes perfect sense as a board overflow system to get rid of your excess items. It's way better than just arbitrarily destroying them. Going forward, we want to put money back in the game. We think that making money through business and buying and selling should just be part of the core. One of the biggest things we wanted to improve from this build of the game is just how tedious it felt to use all of your items every turn. Most of the items in our early builds had activated abilities, so you'd click on them, target something, and they do something. You know, weapons, like I'm using here in the video, are doing damage. Uh, some of these other items buff my durability on my, my other ones. Uh, but you can see how every single turn you're doing 6 to 10 clicks just using the stuff that you've already bought. 
This really did feel a little bit tiresome and we wanted a little bit more elegant of a system that focused on the buying, on the being in a marketplace, meeting new merchants, making choices on how to get stronger. Uh, we wanted less of the focus to be on the actual execution part. Like what am I gonna target with what? How do I attack what? Um, those things didn't seem as fun as going into a market and buying stuff. Another really important part of an intergalactic marketplace that we're missing is merchants. We think the streets should just be filled with interesting characters and you should have to wander between them and buy stuff from them. And we think we're just missing that. We want to give players a bunch of different options for who they buy from each turn, so we can just have these unique characters present on every single turn of the game. If we launched the game without a huge pool of merchants, I think it would just feel incomplete and we wouldn't meet that dream that we're looking for. A big flavor mismatch we have is that items do combat between each other. Items don't perform actions, living things do, but our game is just completely revolving around these items hitting other items right now. Items in our game are more like creatures and minions from other games, and we think that that just feels wrong. And aside from just the flavor mismatch of items hitting each other, we think that combat is just way too important in our game. An intergalactic marketplace, it should be about business, it should be about buying and selling. The buying part of the game should be way more interesting than it is now. But as it is, the player makes one input for buying and then like 10 for using their items. We want to shift the attention away from the fighting phase and more towards the buying and economics of the game. This build is far from a finished product, but we're pretty happy with the direction we're going. We have a few things that we want to make more important and more in the game, and we have a few things that we think should be less important and just take up too much screen time at the moment. So at the time that we were designing this older build of the game, we were really focusing on two things above all else. We wanted the game to be simple and easy to pick up and follow for any new player that tries the game, even people that don't have a lot of card game experience. And the second goal we had was to open up the design space on the cards that we make. In the deck builder version of the game, a lot of the cards felt a little too similar and we kept having to add new mechanics to the game and new card effects to expand the card pool. But for the reasons we went over in the other video where we talked about design space, uh, it just wasn't the most efficient way of doing it. So we wanted to fix this by making cards permanent. So we wanted it to be simple and we wanted a lot of design space. These were kind of the two main goals we had uh, in making this build. I do think we achieved both of those things pretty well. The game did end up being very simple to pick up, even when we put it in front of players that hadn't played a ton of card games before. And there was a ton of design space now that our cards were permanent instead of these transient spells going between a deck and a discard pile. Those two things, as it turns out, was not enough to make a super fun game yet though, so we wanted to keep building on this system and see how we could improve the parts of it that we didn't like. It still felt way too tedious to manually activate all of my items every single turn, and it definitely was missing that bizarre flavor uh, where the player feels like they're walking through an intergalactic marketplace and meeting cool characters, buying cool items, upgrading stuff. So we wanted to put more of the focus on the buying part so that players could explore the world more, and we also wanted to remove some of the tedium from the win condition that we had and all these activated effects on our items. At the end of the day, this older build had a lot to like and dislike about it. We achieved the goals that we set out to achieve, but we feel like we can do a lot better. We took these lessons and applied them to the newer iteration of our game. Whenever we want to make a significant change to our digital build, it takes weeks of coding time. And during that time, we can't be testing our game and making it better. So, we've been making a lot of paper builds recently, paper versions of the game that let us test it more rapidly. Paper builds can be really tedious to use, because the computer keeps track of a lot of things that normally players don't have to worry about. When we're doing a paper build, every time something hits a player, we have to change dice, every time an item takes damage, we have to change its health number. Whenever we want to simulate store drops, we have to shuffle together a big deck of cards and then deal out things at the appropriate turns. It can take us hours to get through one game with a paper build, but it's still much faster than waiting weeks in order to see those changes put into our digital build. That's why making a paper build is so important. Now we want to walk you through the different paper builds that we've put together as we tested different versions of our game. This is paper build number one. So the first paper build we put together was made to test the two row system that's in the digital build, but we wanted to reduce the heavy amount of inputs that players had to make. We thought we would make it so all the items automatically get used attacking across from them. To do this in paper, we needed to have a two row board for both players, and we needed to make sure we kept the different sizes of items in our paper build. 
so we couldn't just use regular sized playing cards for every single item. So to make the player boards, we used this science project poster board, and we wanted to put two pieces of them together, so we attached them with some duct tape and some knives. On this game board, the player has two rows, and each of the rows has ten slots for their items. These would be my two rows, and these are my opponent's two rows. For the items, we use construction paper. They are proportioned to fit into these slots on the game boards. This is a small item, and it fits into one slot anywhere on the board. This is a medium item, and it can fit into two slots. Over here we have a large item, and this can fit over three whole slots on the board. These cards are pretty giant, but they really had to be for us to properly simulate the different sizes of the items in our game. We really wanted to solve the problem of having too many inputs on each player's turn, so we thought we would try to fix it by making all the items use themselves automatically, and the player's gameplay would be about repositioning their items to different spots on the board. If you had a weapon, it would hit the items directly across from it in the opponent's front row, and if they had nothing there, it would hit the item in their back row. If they had no item in their back row, it would just hit their face. This build did a little bit of what we set out to do, because it cut the amount of inputs a player had to do, but not as much as we expected it to. It turns out that picking your item and then what it targets is almost as much mental effort as picking where you're going to put all your items. In fact, sometimes it was worse, because you'd have to put all of your items into place before any of them did anything, instead of doing them one at a time. The nature of different sized items also makes it pretty complicated to put things in alignment, because a large item would go over multiple things on the opponent's rows. This hits three things, and this spot it would hit two things. It was just pretty complicated to wrap your head around. We thought this would significantly cut down on the number of inputs that a player has to make, because they don't have to click on their item and then click a target for all of their items. But in practice, that's not actually what happens, because the players still have to click on an item and then choose where they want to put it, and that's how they aim their item. It's almost as many inputs, even though the item uses itself at a later point. Because this build didn't really do what we set out to do, we weren't crazy about it. We thought we had to make more significant changes to the core of our game, because this still felt like it had a lot of inputs that we didn't want, and it was just too focused on combat between items when we really wanted it to feel like the players were fighting each other. So we scrapped this build and moved on to the next paper build. So we left our first build feeling like we wanted to lean away from item to item combat. And we came up with a new paper build that was built around hero to hero combat. We created a bunch of character stats, sort of like a League of Legends or Dungeons and Dragons character, and the stats would interact with the items that you're using. A character stat sheet would look something like this. They would have a bunch of different stats interacting with their board. The strength would make their weapons deal more damage, speed would determine how quickly they would use all their different weapons, and health was just how quickly they died. So on top of their character stats, they would buy items, and the items would be how they fight. The items would lay out in a row in front of them. Some of them would just give them stats, like these two items. This just gives wisdom, and this just gives strength. And the other items, the ones with big circles, had actions, and they would use those whenever they fought their opponent. We thought this build would help you feel like you were really playing as a character, and you were attacking your opponent, rather than your sword attacking their sword. And in this game, none of the items had any health numbers, and you couldn't hit your opponent's items directly ever. Everything just hit the opponent themselves. When your game is all about character stats, all of the effects have to kind of look the same. You have to just buff this stat or buff that stat. And even though a build that's really high in speed or really high in strength does feel different from each other, there's only so many builds that you can make. If we want to have a bunch of classes in the game and we want them to feel significantly different, then we can't have most of our card effects just change your character stats. There's only so many character stats we can put in the game, and that can only make you feel so different. Another main drawback is that the effects are just kind of lame. We think it's not very exciting where you have an item, and you finally get to use that item, and what it does is change a number on the screen to be slightly larger. Like if you use a weight and it makes your strength go up, or you buy something that makes your speed a little bit faster. It's not that exciting moment that we're looking for. Even though we liked the hero stats mechanically, we thought they just weren't exciting enough and they limited design space too much in order for us to move forward with them. One thing that we really liked about this build was the round system where you alternate between buying and fighting. 
When you take away all the inputs from fighting and executing what your items do, it lets you focus a lot more on picking which things you want to play with, which is generally just more fun. In all of our future builds past this point, we've kept this round system of buying and fighting and buying and fighting, and we have the items doing something without the players having to click on them and choose a target. Unlike auto battling games, we don't have a bunch of units fighting to the death and dying, we don't have any of that. But we do want to have our items use themselves automatically when we can, because it just saves the player from having to make tedious inputs. This is something we think that auto battling games have done really well. This build had a speed system that determined which order the players would take turns. Normally, you would expect players to go, my turn, your turn, my turn, but in this game, we would do a random roll based on your speed. So if you had five times as much speed as the opponent, you would probably take five turns for every one turn that they got to take. We really liked how this speed system worked. It made it feel like you were a really fast character doing a bunch of things, but it was a little bit too parasitic. Speed was just too good because it stopped your opponent from being able to do anything. As we explored this speed mechanic, we realized that our game was getting really close to a real-time fight, actually. Why do we even have turns at all if we can just make the players use their items in a real-time segment? We wanted to try making the fight based on seconds, rather than taking turns back and forth. As we left this paper build, we felt like we wanted to try and remove the character stats from the game and put everything into the item effects. And we also wanted to make the game fights play out in real time, rather than going back and forth with different turns. So now we're on to our third paper build that we're going to show you. This paper build had a bunch of different items in the game, and they had an energy cost written on top of them. This energy cost was just a solid number, and it represented how many seconds it took to use that item. In order to simulate this in paper, we had to use like 100 dice to keep track of how much energy each item was on. We'd say things like, alright, the game moves forward 3 seconds, and then we'd change all the dice on each item to make sure that they were all correct for what time the fight should be at. This game no longer had any hero stats, which did make it feel like we were making more exciting effects, but it also made the game feel like it didn't have that much depth. While we were playing with this build, we felt like the buying phase wasn't very interesting. We felt like we wanted to be able to do a bunch of different things, and because you always had to go to a merchant and buy items, it always felt the same. We wanted to try different kinds of events, so we made a little deck of cards, and aside from just a merchant, there was also a trainer and a smith. The smith would sell you upgrades that you would put on your items and make them stronger, and the trainer would sell you hero powers or permanent skills that you had always in effect. This system of different types of events and merchants is something that we just fell in love with, because it really hammers home the flavor of being in a bazaar. If we do this in the finished game, we get to have a bunch of different really cool characters. You get to pick who you're going to go to, make a bunch of weird aliens, smiths, trainers, and other different kinds of events. It helps that feeling of exploration, that you're in a bazaar and choosing who you want to talk to. So in that same build, our very first version of it was really limited. It only had a few things for each merchant and trainer and whatnot. We wanted to be able to do more things. So we made this build, which was the exact same thing, but with a million more cards. In order to playtest with this build, we had to lay out all of these different decks. The different sleeve colors would represent how early in the game it would show up. So these are all the events you can find, or upgrades, we'd lay them out, early game, mid game, late game. These are the actual events that you draw from, early, mid, late. We've got hero powers in here, these giant stacks at the end, these are upgrades. So we'd have like 12 decks laid out, and then we'd have to like, take, take all of our cards from the correct one, and make sure it was at the correct time in the game for that item to show up. It was a very tedious process. And then after we figured out what was in the stores, then we had to simulate a real-time fight using a million dice. So one game with this build took us like, probably two hours. So this giant build with a bunch of different cards, with merchants and hero powers and items, this one actually felt really good to us. It felt like there was a variety of things you could do and we could build it out even more in the future. So we actually wanted to move forward with this build and put it into a digital build. It was at this point that we started putting together a vertical slice. A vertical slice is an extremely polished 
small segment of the finished game. So it's only one class against one class, it's only a small card pool, but it all looks done. It has artwork put into our digital build instead of those gray rectangles that we were playing with. It has a, new, a game board, it has music, it has everything that makes it feel like a video game. To build out our vertical slice, we used the rules from this last paper build. And once it was in a digital medium, we would further revise it from there. Which brings us to today. After wrestling with it for the better part of a year and trying a million different paper prototypes, we finally had a version of our game that we felt pretty confident in. We felt like it checked a lot of the most important boxes that we were aiming for, and we just wanted to put it together and play it. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. The very first digital build of the bazaar with art. Our very first foundational vertical slice. There you go, guys. As you can see, we cleaned up the logo a little bit. Finally, the B looks normal. And yeah, this is kind of our temporary homepage. We got a little bit of adventure music going. We got the model ship artwork bobbing up and down. A little particle effect on the gem. It's all nice and shiny, just how I wanted it to be. I'm gonna pick a username, pick a server, and jump in. And yeah, this is kind of the homepage layout that we have for now. So. This background image that you're seeing, it's actually just a sketch of the final background image. It's actually just a part of a sketch. The actual background image is much larger. Um, it'll, it'll fit like uh, even widescreen resolutions. And right now the art team's hard at work polishing it, animating it, coloring it. Uh, anyway, here we are guys. Pygmalion, you can see he's breathing and stuff. I'm really happy the art team managed to animate the characters a little bit. I think that, that looks great. Uh, originally, they were really like bouncing up and down the first time we saw them animated, but after toning it down a bit, I think they look great. Um, here you guys can see Vanessa too. Um, we just have the two playable classes right now, because like I said, this is just an early dev build that, that uh, we're playing. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and jump into a game and point at stuff and walk you guys through how the game kind of works before we go ahead and play it with Ben. So here we are guys, this is what it looks like right now. We're keeping it simple to start, but we're definitely in the process of reworking what the whole top half will look like. But you can kind of see the basic layout. Uh, for now, what we have are the two heroes. There's my opponent, Vanessa. Uh, Ben's <laughs> playing it right now. Uh, I'm playing Pygmalion, and we have some merchants in front of us here. So. What Ben is seeing is different from the stuff that I'm seeing. These merchants are only available to me right now. And I, as the player, am basically going through the exploration stage of the bazaar. The game just has two parts. There's the exploration, then there's the combat. So in the exploration, you're exploring the bazaar. You're gonna walk around encountering all sorts of events, characters, merchants, uh, items, and basically you get a series of encounters that you get to choose what to do for. So right now we have four encounters, is kind of what we're testing. And for the first one, I'm gonna go to JJ here. JJ is an item merchant. He's a cool little blue dude. And uh, yeah, he sells stuff. I'm gonna pick up some uh, some weapons. I'm gonna pick up a, a pocket watch. That sounds sweet. All right, I'm gonna get all these things. They seem good. So you guys can kind of ignore the number 99 here for now. Uh, we had a durability system in here like a day ago, the first time we tried this. But we uh, decided we're gonna remove that and just make items permanently stick around at when they're used rather than like melting in front of you. Kind of the same conclusion we came to in that uh, older build. Uh, we had to relearn that lesson with this one. Um, but yeah, you can ignore the 99 for now. So the way items work is basically there's gonna be a 30 second fight. And during this 30 second fight, all of your items are gonna charge up. They get one energy per second. Each item has a different energy cost and once it's fully charged, it gets to use its effect. So Halidee here, for example, its energy cost is 12 which means it takes 12 seconds to use its effect, which is to deal two damage. Uh, it also has a passive, whenever you use it, increase its damage by two. So it buffs itself, it kind of snowballs in a fight. And all the items are pretty different. Pocket Watch makes stuff charge faster. Yo-Yo deals a damage. Um, but you guys can kind of see uh, the general, what's going on there. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and, I'm not even gonna buy stuff. I'm just gonna go straight to the fight to just kind of show you guys what, uh, what happens there. So when combat happens, it's all automated. For 30 seconds, all the items on both players uh, charge up, and once they're fully charged, they do their effect. So in the case of Yo-Yo, 
It has a very low energy cost. Every five seconds, it gets to do its effect, and it's charging faster because of Pocket Watch, speeding it up. So Yo-Yo gets to poke him very often. He has a sniper rifle, which does way more damage all at once. And you can just kind of see how the design space on weapons plays out. It's very different from what we had before, but pretty cool, we think. It looks very exciting when people pull off big combos and stuff's multi-striking really fast. And um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the play pattern so far. It's just adventure phase, combat phase, adventure phase, combat phase. What we're doing is working on making both of those phases as robust and fun as possible. But you can expect in the final version of the game, there's gonna be dozens of merchants. Some of them might be specific to a class. Some might be available for everybody. Um, they're all selling different stuff. Some of them have overlap. It, 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 it's really, you can run into anything. What we're going for here is endless replay value. So we're gonna pump as much content into the game as we can, as many cool events, so that you guys can basically have a endlessly replayable PvP roguelike deck builder, board builder, whatever you wanna call this genre, uh, strategy game. That's what we're going for. I'm gonna go through uh, some of the other basic parts of the game. So right now you get 15 gold per turn. That's how you make more money. One exploration phase, one combat phase, and that's a turn. And then it's turn two. Exploration phase, combat phase, then it's turn three. Um, so yeah, you get 15 gold per turn. In this build, what we're trying to do for the win condition is the first person to get to 30 gems wins. And you get one gem for the first fight, two gems for the second fight, three gems for the third fight, uh, etc. And that just goes on forever. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead into these other merchants and kind of show you guys uh, what some of the other characters do. Uh, so Forja, well actually she's only offering one thing this time, but it's free, so that's kind of neat. Ah, oh, why not? I'll upgrade this yo-yo, make its energy cost all the way down to two, so it can really pop off. Um, yeah, what Forja does is basically upgrade your items. So whenever you... <laughs> oh, man. Ow. <laughs> we have this old mechanic in here where there's like a merchant modifier, and I've rolled the one that gives me one free item three times in a row. All I want to do is show you guys what multiple upgrades look like. All right, there we go. <laughs> so um, yeah, basically there's all sorts of ways you can modify your weapons. Uh, this system is something we're also reworking and I'm very excited for the new one that we're gonna have. It's gonna be really cool. Um, but yeah, you guys can definitely uh, just see how much flexibility there is. Every game you're buying different items. You can talk to different merchants that upgrade those items in different ways. And we haven't even gotten to, to Nufu yet, which kind of, uh, I'll get into in a bit and kind of show you guys how the, the trainer works. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll jump into the fight here and uh, go from there. We didn't really do anything to get stronger, so we're, we're gonna go ahead and get farmed by these weapons. I guess we can yo-yo Ben very aggressively. Sass him a little bit. Send a message. There's gonna be one sniper shot that just wrecks us. All right. <laughs> Some of these early fights are kind of, I don't know, it's kind of funny to me. I can't wait until we have the proper visual effects in here and everything. So yeah, I'm getting poisoned. The fight right now has a bit of a queue system, so it's resolving correctly, but because the animations stack one after the other, the, the rope that you see doesn't line up with the fighting yet, it's hard to describe. There's all sorts of fun bugs in early game design that I'd love to talk all about in future videos. Um, so Nufu is the, the last uh, merchant that we have in this build and pretty much what he does is sells hero powers. So I can get bracers, so if I get that now, every fight I start with two armor. And armor is kind of like uh, a bubble, just prevents damage once uh, when it gets hit and then you lose an armor. Uh, spikes can upgrade my weapons, sure, why not? My yo-yo's attacking a lot, so I can see that being good. So you can see like, okay, I have a weapon that attacks really fast, now I'm increasing its damage, I have a little bit of synergy going on, and that's uh, it's pretty much the game. It's, it's like a series of discover screens where, uh, you know, it, it's like very straightforward, clean gameplay. We're just going for simplicity, we're going for a mobile-friendly interface. Um, you know, I think we're really gonna get there. I think the art looks good so far. Uh, we got this cool size mechanic. This is actually the first time you guys get to kind of see it in action, but yeah, uh, I basically have 
or you know, a row here that I can fill up with stuff. And depending on what I buy, it takes up more or less space. So the big items are generally more powerful. They have very uh, strong effects. But yeah, uh, this is a build that we've been endlessly replaying and we're going to continue playing and polishing and iterating on. But right now it's a good foundation for us to work off of. We have our buy phase, we have our combat phase, and now we're gonna make them more robust. More merchants, more choices, cleaner interface. Uh, we're gonna keep making the UI cooler and more immersive. You know, I can't wait to take this merchant art and really blow it up and make you feel like you're there. Um, you know, I really think this will this will feel like uh, a very different looking product by the time it's done, but all for the better. I can't wait to see where it goes. All right, guys, so I'm gonna jump into a game with Ben and we're just gonna play it out for you start to finish so you can kind of get a feel for how it plays out. And uh, Ben says he wants you to get the authentic vertical slice experience. So we're not really banning anything, just one card. Dock lines is a little too good, but uh, really everything is a little too good and there's a lot of degeneracy right now, but yeah, you know, we'll see where it ends up. All right, right out of the gate, I'm playing against Vanessa, I'm playing Pygmalion. So we're playing different classes and since we have different classes, we have completely different card pools that we're drafting from. Every class is a completely different play style because they don't see any of the same cards. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the pile of money for my first encounter, because it's pretty easy to run out of money early and, eh, ah, whatever, I'm greedy. Why not, let's do it. Man, am I really gonna do it a third time? That's ambitious. I'm gonna go to JJ. All right, let's see, flail. All right, a multi-strikes, let's pick one of those up. Ivory Tusk, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy out the store. One thing to note for this build of the game is that you can see the money cost down here on every item, and your items you can always just sell back by uh, dragging them up and letting go up in the store somewhere. Uh, they always sell for full value too, so there's really no reason not to pick stuff up if you can a lot of times. Let's see, Caltrops, a nice defensive weapon, I might pick that up. Um, let's see, gold coin, luxury tents, hmm, well, let's try gold coin, why not? So, for those of you guys uh, that were paying attention earlier for the combat phase, the way it works is, this green number up here in the bar, that's pretty much how many seconds it takes for the item to use its ability. So every 10 seconds, Ivory Tusk is going to deal one damage and gain a gold for me. Every 10 seconds, Flail is gonna deal one damage three times. Uh, every, you know, well, once a fight, on the very last second of the fight, on the 30th second, Gold Coin's gonna gain money for me. Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap up here. We're just gonna jump into the fight, and let's see what Ben got. So Ben's picking up some weapons. He's trying to stun lock me. How rude. Let's see what happens. So our items are gonna charge up, they're gonna trade back and forth. As much as we like the real-time visceral feel of the fights, it's not quite the right timing yet, and really that's one of the biggest issues with this build. We need to fix the timing of when items charge up and when you see the visual effect. Um, also, there's just a bunch of visual effects missing. We don't have them all in here yet, far from it. Um, but yeah, basically what happens right now is the effects all queue up. So the fight resolves correctly, Every item charges up and uses its effects as if it had played for 30 seconds. But there's a visual desync that's happening because no two animations can happen simultaneously the way that we've programmed it in this early build. Um, and that basically means that the animations have to queue up one after the other and then they resolve in a long stack. And that's why the fight looks a little desynced compared to, um, like, you know, it, as soon as the item's fully charged, it should fire off right away. That's how we want it to be in the final build. That's how it will be, but yeah, for now, it's pretty much what we're doing is dealing with that queue system uh, for the next few weeks while we get that fixed. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to Nufu. I still haven't really shown you guys what the hero powers are capable of, but some of them are just passives that basically buff all your items in perpetuity, but some of them are activated abilities uh, or skills. Uh, you know, much like your items. Like regenerating, for example, every three seconds, this is gonna heal me for two. And I can just do that the entire fight every time. So I'll pick that up. I don't really like those other ones as much. Uh, what else should we get? Let's get more items. Let's see what JJ has. 
Uh, let's see, we got a hatchet, which does some damage, or I can get some armor if I make money during the fight. I do have a couple cards that make money during the fight. It's really just Ivory Tusk, kind of. I'm just gonna get this hatchet and move on with my life. I don't have space for those other ones anyway. Uh, should we get some more money? Yeah, why not? We're running low. And, uh, alright, let's go to Forja. Try to upgrade some stuff. When this item breaks, stun your opponent for two seconds. So, Hatchet here is actually Brittle. Brittle, uh, if you guys remember, this is actually uh, an ability we had in the very first paper deck builder version of the game. It basically means after you use this card, destroy it. Uh, like a one-time use type of thing. Um, in this case, it does respawn every fight, but it does go away for that fight after the first time you use it. So, Hatchet is a great item to put this kind of upgrade on. When this item breaks, stun them, because it's definitely going to break. All right, I'm gonna end my buying, ready up. Let's see what Ben's up to. It looks like he's upgrading his stuff. So Disguise has more energy. And he's just wrecking me with dual casting double barrel. Oh yeah, we're definitely losing this fight. But we'll see. Yeah, I just don't have damage output yet. But it's all good. So the way the win condition works in this build, to remind you guys, it's the first person to get 30 gems wins. So when you win a fight, if it's the first fight, you get one point. If it's the second fight, you get two points. Third fight, you get three points. Um, and that'll just kind of continue till one of us gets to 30 and then the game ends. The items and the options that are presented to you keep scaling throughout the game as well. So the items and the hero powers that I see late game, even the, the blacksmith upgrades that I see late game, are gonna be much stronger than the ones I see early game. We haven't really done that curve properly yet. That's something we're still polishing and learning about what the right numbers are gonna be, but um, definitely improving so much every single day. We keep refining and iterating on this uh, list of cards over and over again. Really just trying to kind of codify, you know, what it is that, what it is that makes for a fun mechanic in this combat engine. We haven't really seen a game that fights like this before, even though it does have a lot of similarities with auto battlers. So it's going to take some time for us to get the, you know, just a good understanding of what the right numbers are and where it should all land. Ooh, snow globe. All right, Ben says we're allowed to play with this card. We gotta find a way to make him regret that decision. Hmm. All right. Um, I guess we could upgrade some stuff, sure. Ooh, that's a good one. I like to see that. Half energy cost. Not sure which one of these we should. I guess it would be this one, huh? Plus two seconds to time based effects of the item. Hmm. On hit, gain money. Let's try that on our triple striking weapon. That could be pretty good. Uh, honestly, I like a lot of these upgrades. I'm just gonna go ahead and... Whoops. Let's go ahead and make this start fully charged. Sorry, it's a little hard for me to like focus. Uh, I, I, I want to try hard. I don't want to. I don't want to lose the the YouTube game of bizarre. But uh, at the same time, it's a lot of stuff to focus on. Uh, so yeah, you guys can see the encounter counter right here. We're at four out of four. This means this is the last merchant I can talk to this fight. Before we finish, um, let's see, I could upgrade one of my weapons again. Let's see if we sell some stuff, we could afford it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the fight here, I think. And ready up. All right, so Ben got way more weapons. Oh man, Switchblade's so broken. So anytime he uses a weapon, he gets to use that automatically. It's kind of like all of his weapons have plus six attack, but on a small item. All right, if we're lucky, I can snow globe him out of the game. Maybe. I'm gonna try to freeze him. But I guess I have these weapons ticking, and the way freeze works right now, if they're frozen and you hit them, then they unfreeze. So really, the snow globe is like, really good in a late game build, but in my comp, it's not really like the best fit right now. Ben's going for a straightforward weapons and buffing them strategy. 
Uh, these these two things that you're seeing in the corner, the drum and the, the clay golem, they are toys that will likely be in the final version of the game. We just haven't uh, rigged them yet, so they don't really work. Um, you know, I can't drum on them just yet, but soon, soon. All right, I see some really good stuff here. Let's see what we can put together. Let's see. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and sell this. We're gonna get a silk scarf. I'm just gonna try to make a, a control build. I haven't actually tried this yet. I don't know if it works in the game. There's a, there's a few infinite combos that kind of get in the way right now, but. Ooh, another half energy cost. That's what we like to see. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that on... Hmm, what item? Let's go ahead and buff this up some more. Okay, so you guys kind of see the pattern. It's pretty much pick a merchant, pick what I want to buy from the merchant, pick another merchant. Perfect timing. All right, well, I think our only hope is to stun lock Ben here, so. Let's go for that and see what we can do. I kind of want more money, honestly, for the next uh, next round. Yeah, because I don't really want to upgrade these items anyway. Let's just take the money pile here. All right, looks like Ben got prepared. We're just gonna pray that Snow Globe can perma stun him. So you can see how he's dizzy here. The freezing is working. And since I don't have any weapons, I never unfreeze him. So he's just stun locked for the entire fight. And hopefully, the way we take advantage of this is safe. So every fight, we're gonna go up like 15 gold. I actually forgot we removed freezing. There is no freezing, there is only stunning. Oh, we got rid of freezing. Ben's saying we got rid of freezing right now. So there's only stunning. Snow globe is spicy, it turns out. Hmm. Alright, now here's the trick. Now we gotta find a way to kill Ben before he infinite combos us. Hmm. <laughs> there's there's just so many absurd ways to to get stronger in this build. I mean this item is supposed to have a 20 second energy cost. And I've upgraded it twice with the half energy cost upgrade, which is like the biggest way you can cost reduce something. And activating extra times with rare artwork. And uh, all my energy costs are reduced by two. So instead of going off once a fight, it's going off 10 times per fight. And every time it goes off, it stuns for four seconds. What I'm basically saying is our game needs tenacity. Probably. Um, hmm. I'm just gonna keep all my stuff the same. Uh, let's see if we have the... Ooh, here's some good hero powers. Yeah, these are really strong. Hmm, so I definitely like the plus 70 health one. It's definitely a... Definitely a strong one to open on. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be better than the... Is it better than the stun? I'm gonna go ahead and, and buff, uh, or I'm gonna replace this healing effect. I wanna make sure I still have a four second stun. I think it's important. All right, what else can we get? When this breaks, your other items gain energy. Uh, on hit, heal for five. I'm gonna reuse the item, gain an armor. No, none of these things are really looking too crazy. I mean, I might as well do this, sure. All right. Let's see what we can upgrade. We can get double damage on something. Extra energy. Ooh, when it breaks, destroy a random enemy item. That would have been a better upgrade to put on this. Unfortunately, right now we're capped at two upgrades per item. This is something, you know, we will likely change in the very near future, but right now you guys can kind of see these orange uh, right up here, these two orange tick marks by the green bar. That kind of shows how many upgrades an item has. So if it has two, you can't put any more on it. Snow Globe also has two. Rare Artwork has one. And Silk has zero. Um, so you guys can kind of see how that looks like. 
Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna wrap up this buy phase and just see if the control build works again. Looks like Ben got the 70 health buff too. That's gotta be one of the best hero powers in the game right now. It's just crazy strong. All right, well, our immediate stun lock is feeling pretty good. Fun and interactive, as all children's card games are meant to be. <laughs> There's definitely some balancing that has to get done, but it's fun to see how people infinite combo each game that we play. All right, I'm gonna sell this uh, bullshit. <laughs> I wanna show you guys a real game. Um, but I believe in myself. <laughs> you thought you were getting out of that? I did. <laughs> Maybe I should have had more faith, Ben, you're right. All right, let's pick up a couple of these things. I'm gonna keep going to the item merchant because I think I need to, well, 10 money's a lot though. I'm gonna take the money. Uh, yeah, my, oh no, I'll, I'll go to JJ, I'll go to JJ. All right, so now that I've sold that plan and we can't just stun lock Ben into oblivion anymore, winning is gonna be much harder. Now we have to, Now we have to figure out exactly how we're doing this. It might be time to get rid of these money items, honestly. Hmm. I think I might just do that. I mean, we do have a point lead. I can afford to lose a couple fights. Maybe we just keep farming money for a little bit longer. I don't know, if we got these items though, they can get a lot stronger. All right, I'll, I'll get a, I'll get a tempered blade. Seems like a good item. Um, and then yeah, I'll just end this phase, and we'll just wrap it up by going to blacksmith. Hmm. Ooh, on hit heal for five. That sounds good with this item. Ooh, and I can also do this. Okay, so this yo-yo, which is gonna multi-strike very quickly, now that I've upgraded it, every time it attacks, it's gonna heal me for five, and it's gonna burn him for four. Even though normally it just does one damage, you can see these upgrades are pretty swingy. Like, they add a lot of power to the card very quickly. Sacrificial. Ah, well, Matchbox is brittle anyway. It's gonna go away when it's used, so let's just go ahead and upgrade that. And, um, yeah. We'll jump into the fight. See what happens. Oh no, Ben has more health. He has 140 health. If I end the fight with less health than him, I lose the game. Or I mean, uh, I lose the fight. Which I think is probably what's gonna happen at this point. <laughs> Looks like it's my turn to be stunlocked. <laughs> Alright. Ah, we're getting some fire in there. Ugh. Oh. What did you do to this shotgun? On hit stun dual cast. Of course you did. Shame on you, Ben. Uh, Alright, we gotta go to hero power guy more often. Oh, that'll do. That's a pretty good hero power. Pretty much makes you twice as strong. Um, I think, I think I'm just gonna go to Forge. I'm gonna need a lot of upgrades to get my stuff up to, up to par. Uh, what is it that we want to be dual casting? I guess we gotta do that one. Well, actually, let's see, half energy cost, first of all. And then, starts the fight fully charged. Let's see, let's do dual cast. I think that's, I think that's acceptable. I do want to get some stuff that helps charge my items faster. There are a few items in the game that do that. I'm a big fan of those. So you've got a couple match boxes here. I might just get rid of, or actually, it's probably time we got rid of gold coin. What am I doing? We don't need money anymore. Let's get a combat item. Let's get oinkment. We need healing in our lives. <laughs> All right. By the way, if you guys have more ideas for cards that can be unique to the world of the bazaar, 
like oinkman throw them in the comments always need more ideas so what we like about this build is you can kind of see how how it plays out it's a little bit tough to follow right now because you guys aren't familiar with the cards yet and we aren't showing the damage numbers on the surface of the cards yet which you know that's among the things we want to change but you can you can see like when one player is ahead he just starts whacking the other person way more a lot of times there's crazy comebacks there's big damage that comes out of nowhere uh, we're talking about doing potentially dynamic visual effects and uh, really I'm just very excited for how this combat phase is gonna shape up with a little bit more polish you're really gonna see it get much better every couple weeks never had so many items before I have so many small ones all right what does Nufu have? Nufu doesn't have anything for me. All right, well, time to see what else we can upgrade. Cause that's pretty much the plan at this point. If there's anything that we're gonna use a lot, we wanna be putting this item on it. Getting more armor would actually just be huge against him. Maybe there's a way I could do it. I, th I think there's a way I could do it. If I, if I put this on this, I think I could probably get my energy costs down. Plus four energy cost, whoa. All right, well. I like this plus one second thing a little bit. Let's try that. All right, well I guess this is like the same upgrade too. All right, I'll pick it up. I gotta win this fight. Let's see what happens. Ben got a coconut. All right, he's all in on his hero powers. And I'm all in on getting stun locked. <laughs> Is it? It's just gonna solo me now, right? Oh wait, we got some armor. We got some armor. Hold on. Wait, he's burning a lot. Wait, is there hope? Ooh, now he's stunned a little bit. Shotgun's not really charging too much. You guys have to ignore the rope here. It's a bit, basically all of our items are going off so quickly, but the game doesn't allow two animations to play simultaneously. So they queue up and we basically watch the queue resolve. We're gonna fix this very soon, but I just wanna explain to you guys why. The items don't get used immediately when they fully charge up. Uh, in the very near future, they will be doing that. Um, hmm. That could be pretty good. Hmm. All right, I gotta do it. I mean, it's just gotta be better than that other thing. Hmm. We could also just do this hero power, which is very powerful, but. All right, screw it, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for it. Let's see if it works. Um. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we want to do here. I think we're just gonna go ahead and go to combat pretty soon. Ah, oh, could get more money. I gotta go to JJ again. I just, I, I gotta see what's in stock. Grindstone, Crook. Hmm. Crook could be pretty good. I don't know, these matchboxes are decent. They're not like, they're not bad. All right, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go to combat and see how this does again. Seemed to work out last time. Hopefully I didn't ruin everything by get, buying the extra health. Uh, yeah, so the sound, uh, the soundtrack right now uh, is just a bunch of samples that Jonathan, our musician, put together uh, throughout the course of the year. And we basically just threw them all on a playlist and shuffled them. And uh, this is just gonna, gonna give us a feel for what kind of songs sound good at different parts of the game, what works, what doesn't. Um, it's a very eclectic mix right now. There's everything. Um, uh, all right, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and go to Forge. So now you guys can see I have 29 gems. Ben has 16 gems. We're on match point. If I ever win another match, the game is gonna end. Um, 
I'm not really feeling these items though. Oh, maybe this actually. This gains three energy. All right, let's do that. Do do do. Let's see what Nufu has. Ben, do you know if uh, double energy production stacks? It does not double stack. Ah. Almost. All right, so what should we pick up? Um, I, I'm just gonna run it, I think. We're just gonna hope for the best. All right, see, so yeah, I'm just gonna wrap up the, uh, the turn. Ah, all my stuff's pretty upgraded already. Kinda just want more money. I, I should upgrade anyway. Winning the last fight just matters so much. I should try to do it. Hmm. Dual cast. Ah, sure, I mean, I guess it can't hurt. We can... Double burn him. Um, uh, maybe new food. I, I don't even know what I'm looking for at this point. We're, we're pretty strong at this point. We're very, uh... Late game buildy at this point. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh... Pass the turn here. This is, I mean, this is okay, but... Uh, actually, Yo-Yo's kind of cool. Or, I mean, Slingshot's cool. Oh, we nerfed Slingshot. Oh, no. The numbers are correct. Okay. Now, what is this karate chop? Quick chop. I'm stunned for five seconds. Which becomes infinite seconds thanks to the stun-locking shotgun. Which is now putting it... Yeah. 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 So as you can tell, fun interactive vertical slice gameplay. Entirely balanced, fun interactive card pool. <laughs> we uh, quickly identified <laughs> the, the, the routes to victory. Because that is what card game degenerates do. All right, so now we're definitely on match point. Whoever wins the last fight wins the game. Yeah, I don't know if I can get out of this with one buy phase. I'm gonna need to get lucky. Honestly, I don't know if the extra health even helps, because... Like, I'm just gonna get murdered either way, so maybe just I want the extra charging up. Don't exactly have the money for that right now, though. Um... I'm just gonna not buy it. I don't even know that I want that yet. Okay, last purchase. What are we gonna go for? If the health doesn't really matter, maybe I'm just supposed to go for Nufu. I'm gonna go for JJ. I feel like there's better items I could have. So what's banned, Ben? Only one of the Vanessa cards. Oh. You can buy whatever. I can buy whatever Ben says. Nice. Yeah, alright. We're doing it. I don't know if it'll stop us from getting stun locked, but we're gonna hope it does. See if the defensive cards help. Okay, we're both judo chopped for five seconds. Hatchet gets in there. Wait, Hatchet doesn't stun him anymore. What? I think it's a visual bug. It's a visual bug. Oh, okay. Oh, you did get stunned, yeah. All right. All right, are we the ones stun locking? Oh no, he's gonna get to use abilities. Oh, we got him. All right. That was a pretty close game. I uh, ended up with 26 points, ended up uh, being neck and neck, whoever won that game won the fight. And yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a pretty basic playthrough, guys. I mean, there's a lot to like and not like about the build, but I kind of want to talk about, at a high level, you know, how it is that we felt about it. Here, Ben, maybe you can help me just queue up again. And, um... I'll pick Vanessa this time, because why not? Ah, oh, whatever, we can both play Vanessa, it's fine. Alright, so... 
I want to kind of walk through and show you guys what we liked and didn't like about this build. Uh, things about it that felt good, things that felt bad. So the, the look of everything in general we thought was awesome, for, especially for such an early stage. I think the art team did a really good job. We really like the art style, the feel of everything. Uh, the perspective is one thing that really stuck out to me. Um, the merchants in the middle do look a little bit off just because we are using a natural perspective for our game board. Most other card games use a drone perspective from like the, uh, like above the game board, straight above the middle of it. Um, and other games use uh, an orthogonal perspective, but uh, you know, for us, we just wanted to start with this natural camera angle where everything's kind of leaning down more. But it kind of squishes the faces of these merchants and we're really gonna rework how those are drawn so that the world feels more immersive. So you really feel like you're at JJ's stall rather than picking JJ from one of three merchant options. So there you have it guys. I mean, this is really the, the first time we've had art come together. It's the first time we've had a fun build of the game and we've been just been putting a ton of hours into it, loving every minute, making it so much better every passing day. We're doing more and more passes over the card set introducing new mechanics, or making big exciting changes for the future that I don't want to leak entirely in this video. Stay tuned on this channel here for future updates to talk about some of the stuff we have coming up. But honestly, all of the things I'm most excited for for this game, we haven't even shown you in this video. And I can't wait to, to really get into them because uh, you know I, I really think it could change strategy games uh, you know, for, for, for a long time if we do some of these things right. We have some big goals, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm confident we can get there if we just keep working on improving it one step at a time. Um, but yeah, this is this is the build as is. You know, the there's a lot to like about it and a lot to not like. the 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 combat felt exciting and awesome. There's a lot of cool stuff that could happen, and we loved that. And it really felt easy to follow, depending on what was going on. It just needed to be cleaned up a bit with you know the simplicity of card effects and especially the visual sync issue. We need to make it so that when an item is fully charged, it does its ability right away. We need to make it so multiple animations can go off simultaneously. And as soon as we get that all sorted, I really think this will be a very natural combat to, to follow. Yeah, make sure you sub, make sure you follow. We'll see you guys here on another Friday for another update of The Bazaar.